Hi, everybody. I hope you're doing marvelously well. Okay, I don't know how many times I've been asked to demo Adam speakers. Well, we finally have them. Wait. As you can see, we've taken everything down. The beautiful AR-18s have gone, the Focals on the Edge have gone, and the Gentle X. And we have these. And this isn't a pair. This is just one. This is the S3H. This is the mother of all Adam speakers. Actually, there might be a bigger one for all I know. But these are essentially, well, let's go and look over here. So this is it, midfield monitor. We've got ISO pucks, so don't worry, they'll be decoupled. Everybody's always like, they need to be decoupled. Bearing in mind that this is actually a plinth with a rubber mat on it. So we'll go, we've got stands, we've got this, we'll work it out. I'm pretty excited. I have not, I've not heard these. And there's gonna be no other speakers up there, so we're just gonna use them. Let's find out a little bit more about them. They're four inch dome cone hybrid carbon composite and with a two seven inch woofers. So, okay, so it's got these two, but one, two, seven inches, and then a four inch dome here, and then the ribbon, although I don't think they call it a ribbon, do they? They call it, you know, it says German Handmade Precision S Art Tweeter, with the HPS Waveguide. DSP also handles limited base frequency driver protection. DSP options, a built-in factory EQ presser emulates the response at Adams Naturally S3 monitor. Oh, wow. So I'm just gonna get them up, put them up here and give them a listen. Well, the guys are gonna help me put them up because they're huge. But you know, why don't we actually get one out first? Send the bishop to the actress. Dun, dun, dun. This has been one of my easier box openings. <laughs> I'm well renowned for not being very good at this. Okay, S, S series here. So there's a quick set, quick start guide. Getting started, here we go. Page six, we get started. Before using your new speakers, you should let them settle at an ambient temperature of your listening environment by leaving them in position for an hour. Okay, well, we'll put them up and leave them for an hour. Placement, pretty logical stuff. Look, do it at ear level. What, who would have thunk it? Okay, again, equilateral triangle. All the logical stuff. All right, we're gonna de-sock it. Is that a thing? Is now. De-socking, de-sockerization. All I can say is it was a two-man job getting it out of the box. Wow. <laughs> they are very beautiful looking, let's be honest. Wow. Side to see. And just so you know, there's some substantial weight going on in here. <laughs> Not sure the power rating, but my guess is, is they're pretty loud. I mean, they're midfield, so they're going to fill a room. Wow. Lovely. Let's give them a listen. So we are going to listen to songs that I recorded here and mixed here. So I know. I know this room, I know the seating position, I'm excited to hear. Basically, these speakers in this room where I have lived and worked for the last, I don't know, 12 years now, 10 years, it's a long time. My memory and my of Adams when I was working at say hybrid, for instance, was like a bit of a low mid thickness. And I do know on some of their cheaper range, there's one particular model, I think it's the A7Xs, they're the $1,200 ones, I'm probably getting it wrong. Those don't have it, and it's they're the biggest selling in that price range. So I'm wondering with this newer model, I know it's not brand new, I know it's been out for a little bit, um, I'm wondering if they have done that same thing. So I'm excited to hear. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go to Katie Laurel first. Those of you who follow us will probably know this track, and we have downloaded the multi-tracks before. And this, what I like about this track is it's got a lot of oomph, a lot of low end, it's also got a lot of verbs, a lot of depth, basically a lot of front to back. And with these tweeters, um, I'm really hoping that the detail 
in the high mids and the high end is going to be such that you're going to really hear depth rather than just hitting you in the face that are actually going to, you know, give us, yeah, a feeling of depth. Really interesting. Um, the, the high end is detailed without being too aggressive, but isn't too smooth. One of the things about some ribbon tweeters I dislike is that it's almost too soft. You know, growing up with NS10 ears and Genelec 1032s, obviously not Genelex as much, but definitely the NS10s, we're used to mid-range being really, really super aggressive. And I think for many of us who use those speakers when we first started, we want things to be a little bit more upfront, which is why I like the, you know, AR-18s. They feel like NS10s that you can work on for longer. So I'm impressed with the mid-range on this. Now, this is a soft-sounding track. So let's see if we can find something to really test the mid-range. I'm going to go to a little Empire track. Now, this is super dense, smashed, you know, mix. When the chorus comes in, it's pretty heavily limited. There's a lot going on. So the reason why I'm choosing this is because I want to hear that depth and I want to make sure there's enough detail in there. It's one of the things I do like about modern speakers compared with some of the older ones is that you can hear a lot more going on like this. So those subtle reverbs, et cetera, that you can use really, really, you know, start to come to life. When I'm listening on, say, a pair of NS10s, I'm listening to a modern limited track. It's unbearable. It's just flat and loud and hitting me in the head. When I listen to super modern speakers, I hear a lot more detail, which is a must when you're dealing with modern pop. Definitely, you know, there's extra detail in there for something that's so smashed. I mean, you know, even for the little mic, you can probably hear how it's just like going right up against it. I enjoyed that. But this is going to be a real test for me. This is the Jonah Smith track that we did at Sunset Sound. And why I'm going to use this is because this is just mics on the floor with a band playing live. So it's a live vocal with a piano. Um, so he's singing and playing piano. There's a bit of bleed in everything. There's live drums and live bass. And room mics. Like in the whole thing. That's the sunset sound plate. My mind will leave me alone. I was blind, didn't know how far I could fall. Okay, I'm loving it. It's really nice. Um, they're not—they're—they're they're, they're different to what I'm used to. Um, 
There's uh, that doesn't have that low mid bump, that kind of low low bump. Definitely doesn't. Um, the low end is tight, but it's still there. It's not as extended as some other speakers um, that I've recently been using, but it seems very controllable. I think I would know how to mix a kick drum on it. So let's do something. Um, you know what? I'm going to go to Golden by We Were Astronauts, which is more like a Kings of Leon kind of track. It's very in its place, like the guitar that's completely panned to the left, the guitar that's completely panned to the right is there. <laughs> I've got a pretty strong opinion as to what these speakers are, for me at least. Um, you know, I've I've been in, a, like many of you, I've worked in, I don't know, 50, well, probably more studios, but like lots of really well-known studios out here, United East West, uh, Sunset Sound, NRG, Capital, you know, all of the, the big studios are here. And of course, I've worked in my own studio. I've worked in studios in New York, London, you name it, Berlin, France. All I can say is like, the speaker characteristics do translate unless you're in a room which sounds absolutely dreadful and then everything sounds terrible, but you do know your speakers. Now, obviously the acoustics are always going to change the room, but when I go into a room that I don't know and I've got a pair of speakers that I do know, it is a calming influence. So I love that. As I said earlier, I grew up on aggressive mid-range speakers and it's tense. I like the AR18s because they have the characteristics without being too brittle. I love 1032s. They have an extended low end, which is very pleasing for their size. Um, and I've recently been using the new Genel X, which have a really, really amazing front to back depth. This is what I honestly think. And I'm, I'm, if you've used these, I'd love to know what you think. I think these speakers sit in the middle. I think they have the mid-range forwardness that I want, like I've got my AR-18s. They also have a lot of extra depth because they're modern, and those beautiful tweeters seem to sort of give me extra layers of high end. You know what I mean? It's like it makes me feel like I can hear things going back, not just straight in my face like I could with NS10s, where everything's just hit you at once. So if I was to hazard a guess, and the Adams people can tell me I'm wrong, or those of the, you that own these speakers can tell me. I'd love to obviously mix on them. I'm going to mix on them. But so far, my gut is, is that these speakers sit in the middle. They sit in the middle between the ultra modern, like almost soft sounding, should I say? And then the older school 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s speakers, which were very upfront. So it's kind of an interesting place, isn't it? So you're gonna get the mid-range detail that you want, a little bit more excitement in the high mids, but you're gonna get a little bit more extra depth. I wanna, I mean, it must be deliberate. I mean, these people that spend hundreds and maybe even millions of dollars designing speakers, I'm sure they're very aware of that. So that's what I think they've achieved with the speakers. They don't have a massive extended low end, but the low end is there and I know I could mix on them, but they don't have a massive extended low end. But detailed, meaning, you know, not NS10s fatiguing. Detailed as in I crank them and I could work on them. Um, I think this could be really good. We'll leave them up. We'll leave them up. We'll put the uh, AR18 as well. We can find some room. But we'll leave them up for a while and I'll, I'll do some mixes on them. We've got an album to mix. In fact, we've got a couple of albums coming in, Eric. We've got, yes, uh, we've got a few things to mix. So this should be interesting to try out uh, long term. But my summation is I believe that they've designed, probably deliberately, maybe I could be wrong, speakers to be in the middle of the two extremes. Because the difference between 
a really super modern speaker and a pair of NS10s is like chalk and cheese. They're like so different. So for lots of people, they can't work on them. They can't work on modern speakers. It's a big shock. I think what they've done here is they've, they've understood the advantages of both speakers. Interesting. Yeah, great stuff. It's no giveaway. Um, there's no giveaway on these speakers. But um, thank you, Adam, for letting us try them out. I really appreciate it. There'll be a link below, obviously, where you can check out more details and all good stuff. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you know these speakers, let us know your thoughts. I'd love to know. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing. We'll speak to you all again very soon. So long, farewell, avida, say, and au revoir. Adios. <laughs>